Five Warriors. So we got to keep on talking about this subject, intermittent fasting, and it's how safe it is and uh, how effective it is because people still keep pushing that negative narrative that, you know what, intermittent fasting, of course you're going to lose weight because it's unhealthy. You're not eating. You're not eating. And that's not good for you. And if you don't eat, you'll lose weight. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we get that all the time. And it's consistent. And it's unfortunately pushed by so many dietitians and nutritionists. They're like the number one that push this idea. They're more for intuitive eating, right? Intuitive eating has been the champion for uh, for nutritionists. And I guess what they're trying to do is one, uh, find a middle ground in terms of the, the, the human psychology, right? The human uh, psychological health, um, as well as find something that's sustainable. And I guess to them, Intuitive eating makes the most sense to go into that uh, into that route. However, as we've seen in studies, intuitive eating is the worst in terms of all of the different diets. It was put up against 400 different diets, it, and it came in fourth. And it came in 400, which is the last for actual weight loss effectiveness because the intervention is not strong enough it's it's basically a no intervention intervention just eat when you feel hungry and don't when you do not and that is essentially how everyone eats you're more hungry when you're overweight you tend to be more hungry um on more occasions than someone who's not um and that's not based off of your body having a set point cue of when to be hungry, it's from habits. It's from forced habits over time. It's from building these habits over time. Ghrelin's gonna shoot, you're gonna be hungry, you're gonna have an apt appetite, and that's just how it is. So intuitive eating is very, very difficult because listening to your body, your body could literally tell you the wrong things. It can tell you that you're hungry because of pattern as opposed to being hungry in terms of actual caloric energy needs uh and a nutrition is just that that always goes over their heads because they're only focusing on finding the best middle ground in terms of psychological health and weight loss but the truth is something one of those things have has got to give intuitive eating gives up the weight loss factor for the psychological health factor um but intermittent fasting even though they want to chastise it, it has shown over and over and over again uh, that it is consistently effective um, over the years. When are people going to just say you, you could do intermittent fasting? The studies have given us enough data that you can do intermittent fasting. Well, let's look at this UIC Today newsletter that dropped um, looking at... Uh, a researcher, uh, Ms. Verde, Professor Verde, that uh, who has gone into publishing multiple studies um, on intermittent fasting, and this these are the people that you definitely want to listen to. The people who are creating papers, the people who are pub publishing papers uh, when it comes to weight loss, because they get it, they understand. They're actually in the field. They're not looking from afar and just saying this is the one i like and that's the one i like they're actually going through the process and understanding what's happening all right so let's go ahead and t take a look at what they had to say research shows that intermittent fasting is safe and effective intermittent fasting an increasingly popular weight loss regimen is an effective and safe way to lose weight according to a body of research from uic's Krista Varaday, which is right here. She's a professor of kinesiology and nutrition. She is not a dietitian. She is a, uh, she actually has a PhD and she publishes these studies. And there's a lot of studies that she's published that has to do with the, uh, with, uh, time restricted eating with alternate day fasting, 
uh, you know, and mainly alternate day fasting and time restricted eating is, are the two that she's focused on, I believe. Uh, Rariday, a professor of kinesiology and nutrition, has studied different versions of intermittent fasting, such as alternate day fasting, where people alternate between uh, eating up to 500 calories one day and then whatever they want next, and time restricted eating, where people only eat during a fixed window uh, of each of time each day. Now, we've seen through studies that time restricted eating has been the most effective one in terms of having uh, the most positive outcome in comparison to all the other ones alternate day fasting is there as well it's been doing well too uh, in terms of the positive um uh outcomes uh, but I, the ones where you can eat anything during the fasting time frame don't uh are not as powerful we have not shown to be more uh powerful um in terms of the positive outcomes um in turn than uh the non-modified uh, alternate day fasting where you don't you don't uh, eat at all it's zero calories during the fasting day <clears throat> people love intermittent fasting because it's easy uh, Verde says uh, people need to find diets that they can stick to long term now this is one of the this sentence right here is the thing that that I that I find so hilarious because the world will tell you, the world, not me, the world, the world will tell you that intermittent fasting is impossible to do because you're constantly not eating. And that's how you're going to, how are you going to keep that up? However, the world does not understand the way the body works in every study that we see even when they put intermittent fasting up against regular old just counting calories the intermittent fasting group report less hunger on questionnaires than the calorie restriction only group why is that if they're fasting they must be starving they must be writing oh my goodness i cannot eat Please feed me. I am so hungry. On a scale of 1 to 10, how well does your hunger feel? 25. But they're not doing that. They're saying, eh, I'm not that hungry. The calorie restriction group is saying, eh, I'm a little bit hungry. But they get to eat all the time. Why? Because it's all based on your biological patterns. If you're consistently eating all the time, your body will be hungry during those times that you eat because that is the biological habit, biological pattern that your body is in. So ghrelin, which is the hunger hormone, will shoot during those same time periods every day. If you reduce the amount of times that you eat every day, you are also essentially reducing the amount of times that ghrelin is releasing every day. Now, it's not going to happen on day one, but you'll be surprised how quickly it happens. Within about a week and a half, or maybe two weeks, depending, everyone's different, it's happening. You're no longer hungry. There's times when you forget that you have to eat during your eating window. It's that simple. So by the biological research of it, you would be less hungry. By the person who doesn't do any research, just by conjecture, he's gonna say, eh, you gotta be more hungry because you're not eating. But they're not understanding how the, bi the biology, the science of that works. People find intermittent fasting to be easy. And the most important thing on any diet is longevity is sustainability it's not how fast it makes you lose weight believe it or not that doesn't matter it's not how great it makes you feel or whatever every time you do it it's consistency can you do it forever that's the thing you got to do it forever a lot of people just pick diets to get them somewhere 
and then they leave it and then they regain the weight which is the number one problem in the united states is weight regain not weight loss weight loss is there's no problem with that everyone can lose weight most people regain the weight <clears throat> so she studied six hour window of time restricted eating because calories uh, and leads to weight loss time restricted eating also works works as well as counting uh, calorie counting for weight loss in a lot of her uh, studies but when you look at the actual minutia of the study and look at the data and the date and what was reported out of the data we always see that intermittent fasting uh, the body fat the fat specifically is lost more in the intermittent fasting group. It might not be statistically significant, but it is visually significant. We've already shown you what five pounds of uh, body fat looks like. If they'll lose like five or six more pounds than the uh, calorie restriction group, and that might not be such a big number after you know six months or so, or whatever. But visually, that is a big difference. Visually. Uh, time restricted eating works for weight loss and obese individuals. Intermittent fasting safe, effective for those with type two diabetes. Insight into in, into the impact of intermittent fasting on female reproductive hormones. So that's another thing that people go, oh well, you know, th th there's there's problems here if you know if women do it, women can't really do intermittent fasting. That is not true. They can they can and they have been successful they they're hanging their hat on this one study that looked at post menopause and pre menopause and during menopause and they don't understand how this stuff works they don't understand it we've seen so many studies with women from all different ages see, seeing uh the effectiveness of intermittent fasting and they want to point at one study it's 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 this is why things get so easily muddied in, in science because all you need to do is stay on the sideline waiting for the one study to cherry pick to make you happy and pretend like no other studies work. We don't do that here in at Fledge Fitness. We look at meta-analysis studies because those are the most important, uh, uh, you know, studies, right? Uh, it's looking at multiple different studies putting them all together yeah we'll look at individual studies that's important too but those don't those aren't smoking guns meta-analysis are much more powerful and then when in the meta-analysis and there's randomized controlled trial studies it's even more powerful right so there's so much you know, so many layers of what's more powerful than the other study but they'll pick just this random one study talk about that like that's you know, the holy grail and all other studies don't exist so you got to be careful just because a study exists that shows something doesn't mean that that is representative of what can happen because even in that study there's outliers so multiple studies is more uh telling of what is more likely going to happen to you specifically <clears throat> so uh i just wanted to quickly touch on it we're not gonna read everything here but i wanted to quickly touch on you know the miss or professor veriday and her research and show the dichotomy between somebody who's just a nutritionist telling you what what diets to to do what diets not to do and then somebody who's actually in the field right it's easy when you think of fasting and you never do any research you think of it in a negative light you think of it in a light of you're not eating you're starving you're this you're that but they actually show that you know intermittent fasting is effective it's easy to do people like to do it when they do it people return people are asked hey if you can do this without us doing a study would you do and most people that do intermittent fasting say yes they'll continue it because of the success and because of how easy uh, it felt to do intermittent fasting and they also talked here uh about uh what was the thing that they that they mentioned here uh, that there's other benefits that come from intermittent fasting. It's not just the weight loss. There's also benefits to insulin sensitivity, right? There's also benefits to blood pressure that are innate to intermittent fasting that don't just come from the weight loss that have been shown where people are not allowed to lose weight, that they have to eat at maintenance level, yet those numbers go down, showing that it isn't 
because of the weight loss that they are getting better in those areas, they get better in those areas at such a dramatic level because the intermittent fasting itself is making that happen. So there's, it's not just, oh, this is the one for one with calorie restrictions. There are innate benefits to intermittent fasting. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and end the video there. Hopefully this video was informative for you. Um, I enjoy talking about this stuff because I like to buck the trend of what people think is, you know, is bad, right? And they think intermittent fasting is bad and they still think it is, even though it's ri risen in popularity. With it ri rising in popularity, more people are now trying to be the, you know, the being the juxtaposition of, Oh, you know, the contrarian of oh, this cool thing isn't as cool as you think. Eh, sometimes it is as cool as you think. Until the next one, guys. Peace out.